SDLC, Software Development Life Cycle. This is a standard methodology that I've used since early in my career, which began before the internet. Um, and it's a way of understanding business objectives and applying uh, to building a system and designing an appropriate solution. There are, in general, there are five major steps to use as a guideline. There's analysis and planning of your systems. So think about what you're going to need, what types of systems, then begin to design your system and use a whiteboard, use, a, uh, use some documentation and begin to specify the architecture of your system, the actual programs that you will need and the workflows. Then you begin to build the system by getting the component software, hardware in place and begin to assemble that through programmer systems administrators. Then once you've begun the rudimentary a build of your systems, your applications, and your workflow, you begin testing. Uh, and that has takes various forms, testing the units of code. The code itself uh, has a bigger piece of multiple units, and then multiple pieces of code into a system. Beyond that, systems then integrate into other systems. So, for instance, uh, your database of your products will integrate into your order management system, which will integrate into your accounting system and those types of integrations. And all of them, each component and each unit and each system and integration will need to be tested. Uh, and then as you're testing it, at the same time, you're also beginning to roll it out as an implementation. And then back, each of these five major steps come through a life cycle from beginning systems analysis through end if you will, implementation, but beyond implementation, there's things like ongoing operation and maintenance. And then over time, you're going to phase out components of your system. So there's the life cycle portion of it phasing out or the end of that life cycle for that component. The overall system of your business will continue, but various pieces will have various uh, birth, beginning, uh, mid-stage, of life operation and then end of life cycle. So here you go. Um, analysis and planning systems design. It's a, a flow from left to right, building the system, testing the system, implementation and service delivery, then come all the way back and start all over again. Um, think about things like availability, uh, mission critical systems have even higher than 99%. They have what's known as five nines or six nines, which is 99.999% uh, availability, which is downtime once every five years. Designed for scalability to handle more users, more products, more services, more content distribution, streaming, all of these things factor into scalability. Uh, build in management for end-to-end -end delivery of your products as well as your system components. Plan for growth within your system and your site growth for users, as we mentioned in uh, scalability. Uh, design pages for high-speed performance. Uh, as you're testing, you're going to go through system volume tests. Uh, these can be impacted by the way you've designed the pages, the way images and videos are loaded. All this stuff impacts performance. And you'll begin to understand and optimize workload on a system. So systems analysis and planning, we mentioned earlier, business objectives, system functions, information requirements. Uh, so in addition to listing the capabilities that you're going to need to achieve those objectives, you have to know the elements, the data components, uh, the specific data that will be used throughout the system. Uh, and when you break that down to a much more granular level, your, data, your information requirements will have field level uh, specifications, length level, uh, data, uh, uh, data type level specifications. Okay, so uh, this is an interesting chart about business objectives, functionality, and information requirements at uh, various stages. Uh, for instance, right there in the middle to actually, if your business objective is to execute a transaction, your shopping cart and your payment system or the functionality that you'll need. And the information that you'll need is credit cards, secured credit card clearing, and multiple payment options. So not just uh, Visa, MasterCard, but potentially PayPal, uh, 
or newer wallet technologies. Alternatively, if you want to display goods as a business objective, you're going to need your digital catalog, which then will have dynamic text and graphics that will go along with the catalog as the information requirements. Examples here, feel free to read that a bit more in depth. Uh, on the system's design side, hardware and software platforms, when you begin to specify uh, your, your applications, um, uh, begin to put together a description of main components of your system and their relationship with each other. So how is the hardware going to interact with the software? How are various software components going to uh, interact with each other? So for instance, I mentioned the order management system interacting with your web pages on one side and your product pages, but also your order management system interacting with your accounting system on the back end. So two components of logical systems design, uh, of systems design are logical and physical. The logical is a classic systems data flow processing functions, databases, and all of those schematic views of how your, uh, your system will, and your, your workflow will happen uh, uh, through business logic. Uh, on the physical side, uh, these are the actual pieces of hardware and software components that have to be loaded, built, run, and maintained that allow the data and the processing and the databases to function on top. So if you look at it from a hierarchy, the physical design is below and the logical design uh, business functionality is above. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, a logical design for a simple website. Um, you start up at the top uh, left, you have a website customer comes in, he logs in uh, over on the right uh, where he verifies his login, his customer information is checked up top on the far right with the customer database. He then begins to look at uh, the product pages and displaying the catalog in the middle, uh, which then utilizes the catalog database to get the data to display the products to the user. Um, then he might click on the uh, buy button, which takes him down straight down to the bottom of uh, this diagram in the middle to purchase products. And that hooks up into the orders database, as I mentioned, order management database, where the product is then purchased. And then the information about the purchase is uh, sent to the left to the fulfillment and warehouse and distribution center where the products are picked, packed, and put in boxes or what have you uh, for digital downloads. They are shipped directly over the internet. Uh, the order shipment is confirmed and sent to the, uh, to the customer. Very simple diagram, very useful diagram for you to put together the flow of your site. So think about that as you're putting your projects together. Uh, more physical design really talks about the, uh, the infrastructure as we discussed earlier in, in this lesson too. Um, so over on the left, you have the customer that's, his infrastructure is his desktop or his laptop or his tablet or his smartphone. Um, and then he's connected over a cable or um, uh, some type of broadband interconne uh, internet connection through an ISP uh, there in the middle. Uh, and then through the ISP, uh, the connection then is more uh, robust, let's say a T1 connection uh, to the merchant website. That's your firm's website in this e-commerce project. And this could be a variety of, you know, for a smaller business, Dell or HP, uh, web servers, uh, various sizes, typically uh, five terabyte. Uh, but then you begin to put together the real infrastructure and the physical components of the database, which, uh, you know, for example, could be an Oracle SQL database. The e-commerce platform, in this case, IBM WebSphere, but it could be Demandware or uh, ATG or Venda or any of those. Then some ad servers like uh, DoubleClick or OpenX for an open source ad, ad server. Then your online catalog, uh, which could be a component of the e-commerce suite or could be a separate catalog. Then uh, you would probably run a mail server to communicate via mail with your um, email with your, uh, with your clients. And typically if you're running uh, 
an outsourced, uh, uh, robust, uh, let's say, exact target or Bronto or uh, iPost to do heavy duty, uh, uh, large volume, complex, scheduled, big list email campaigns. And then your shopping cart software, which again might be part of the e-commerce suite or e-commerce platform, or might be a separate specialized shopping cart such as a Magento. Okay, so building your own versus outsourcing. So this is where you get into what is your business? What is your, uh, what is the, the core of what your, uh, your focus is? Are you a tech company or are you a retailer or a distributor of goods that's serving a business need? So outsourcing might be uh, a very good choice for, let's say, uh, um, a retail fashion designer who's really about putting up the best pages to sell uh, uh, fashion accessories or, uh, or, or clothing uh, as opposed to a tech company like, uh, um, let's say you're uh, selling hardware components or software com uh, packages, uh, let's say micro center or uh, micro warehouse. Um, those types of companies, they might build their own because they're in that business. A fashion company whose focus really is on fashion or apparel or non-tech might consider outsourcing. And outsourcing takes multiple forms. Um, it could be uh, an outsourced uh, data center where your servers are identified in a co-located location, um, or uh, it could be a cloud-based where you buy on-demand services uh, or some combination of the two. Okay, so if you want to look at the choices, this is another SWAT-type grid uh, uh, comparing hosting the site on the left to building the site up top in the center uh, and then completely in-house versus on the top left versus on the bottom right completely outsourced. Um, you have in the middle, uh, 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 on the middle bottom, mixed responsibility, build it inside side in terms of the applications but have it hosted on the outside or on the top right have your applications built outside but you host it on your data center. So a variety of different ways to do that. Um, we're going to skip this. Sorry about that. Um, testing, implementation, and maintenance. Um, I, I touched on these earlier. Testing at the micro uh, unit level and code level. System testing where you begin to put the components of code together and start running volume system testing uh, to stress out uh, your assembled system before it actually goes live and is fully released. Uh, and then there's acceptance testing, working with the user organization either within your company or if you're a tech provider, out to your client user company, and then going through a series of acceptance tests on performance usability uh, based on business, technical business objectives that you've set up ahead of time. Implementation and maintenance is important uh, because as uh, after the acceptance testing is is completing, you will roll out uh, the site. It will go live. It'll be uh, have live users. It'll be in production. Transactions will be happening, and you really are underway in an operational mode, where which was your goal uh, to build your system and roll it out. So you have to maintain that system. You have to ongoing look at it, fix any bugs that come up, uh, any changes, any additional development. Uh, or, or maintenance fixes you need to apply. These have their costs, they have their resources involved. And then you'll also, uh, smart companies take advantage and begin to benchmarking the performance of their live site. Because their live site is always gonna uh, bring wonderful and strange and different things that might not have happened. You cannot cover everything in testing. So it's very important to begin and long-term set as a, a maintenance objective to benchmark your site. So. What is your traffic at day one, you know, day 100, day 500, and how have things changed, what patterns have changed, what usage has changed. So combining that with systems-oriented uh, data analytics, tracking, measuring, and then 
uh, gaining insights from these benchmarking and tracking and making decisions on how to move forward with improvements or changes, informed changes.